has just been won. So we welcome you here again, thanking you for being with us yesterday, last night, and thanking you again for being with us today. This is the first, I believe, for the Muslims in this area to have an open-air tent meeting that kind of reminds me a little bit of Hodge and the tents that were put up, that are put up every year in Arafat. Very hot, sandy desert, but it was cool under the tent many times. Brothers and sisters, Imam Muhammad, to those in the religion of Al-Islam. Not because I say so, being one of his followers, and not because hermits and thousands of others like me say so. It is because we believe, we feel, and we have experienced what he has said enough of the religion to know that he had Give us the understanding that we are currently receiving. Most every normal person can talk, but not all are gifted. Most every normal person can talk, but not all are gifted with special knowledge and talent to be speakers. Likewise, those that are classified as intelligent people, knowledgeable people, scholarly people. We cannot claim to understand this religion by only being able to read the English translation with an English dictionary. We will only increase our knowledge of the diction of the English language itself. Even a knowledge of Arabic is not qualification enough to claim understanding of the intent of the revelation of the Holy Quran in Arabic. Proof of that is the millions of people on earth that can speak the Arabic language fluently, but are not Muslims. Imam Muhammad reads Arabic, he writes Arabic, he understands Arabic, and he teaches Arabic twice a week in Chicago. He understands the revelation of the Holy Quran revealed to Prophet Muhammad by God in his pure Arabic text. In that understanding, in his pure Arabic text, is what enables us to understand it so easily because he explains it so easily. We have proof that what he has done has been successfully done. Thousands, hundreds and thousands of American people and also people in the Caribbean, people who at once, at one time or another, were experiencing and indulging in self-worship or man-worship as was done in the old history, nation of Islam. But thanks to Allah, as the Holy Quran depicts Allah, He has gifted us with a gift to make it plain that we should not be serving any form or any part of creation but to only serve the Creator. Rabbi al the Lord of all the worlds, one God worship. He has changed the lives of people who no longer worship creation, but are now in continuous process of worship and Creator, not just in the simple terms of 
praying on the prayer rug, but also in deeds and actions. So now, any further ado, I will call forth our Imam, leader of our community, Imam Warizuddin Muhammad. Takbir! Takbir! us 
and the measure of our bad deed, no more than that measure. If we really believe that, then we won't worry so much, we won't take to heart so much the condition of those who are suffering around us. It is important that we don't allow ourselves to become too burdened, too broken down, too disappointed, too upset over the condition of the miserable lot of the people. Because if we, those who are healthy, those who are managing their life well, if we allow the condition of the miserable lot to, be, to become too much of a burden on us, then that will hinder us doing much that we should be doing to make life better for all. So let us take direction from the Word of God and let us not feel too bad because God is always in charge of everything. One more reading from the Word of God, the Book of God, the last revelation. God has revealed and the prophet says, Shall I seek the Lord over me, anyone other than God, while he is the Lord of everything? It is important for a select few among us to be in touch with our situation, with our circumstances, and to be ahead of our to be ahead of our concerns. Some of us, a select few of us, must stay ahead of our concerns. And those who are qualified to do that will be successful only if they have no master over them but God. The big problem for us as a Muslim community is the fear of gods that are not God. The big problem for us as a people is the fear of gods that are not God. What I offer today is no complex, complicated philosophy or ideology. What I offer today is no more than common sense reasoning. And I'm convinced that that's the best solution, especially when you're addressing the general population. You should come forth with common sense reasoning. I'm not qualified to speak to intellectuals. I don't have a single degree from anywhere. I'm qualified to speak, I believe, to anybody that has common sense. Because I take pride in the use of good common sense. And our holy book, our holy book guides us to common sense. It is a common sense message. Although it has complex ideas, very complex ideas, uh, in one uh, word of the Quran to Muhammad, Muhammad was addressed by God in the very beginning of the revelation. And he was told, it's all you wrapped in your manual, in your mantle, all you wrapped in your mantle, the cloak. It says, get up, stand up, and warn the people. It says, God is going to give to you a weighty word, a heavy word. Though whereas the Quran appeals to our common sense and directs us to common sense, it still has all that is needed to satisfy the elite are the intellectual groups, the intellectual classes. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, here to try to make it very simple and clear what Muslims should be doing and should be about right now, right here in Los Angeles, in the United States of America. To know what we should be doing, to know what we should, should be about, 
We have to use good common sense. God says, work you in your places. I am a worker. Our God is not an idle God. Our God is not a God at rest. We don't believe in a static universe. And we don't believe in a God that is resting. This is the Muslim belief. It is not to address any, uh, the, any uh, deficiencies in anybody else's religion, but it's just to bring that message to you in hopes that Muslims and our visitors will appreciate that being said to them of God. That God is not at rest. He never took a rest. We misunderstand what we read. God never took a rest. He has never taken a rest. He is never resting. And the Sunday is not the day of rest, the day of the Lord. He is active every day. As God says in our holy book, there is not a single split second for which he's not active in a wonderful work. So we have to believe in that. God is active. If people believe that God took a rest, it makes them want to take a rest. And if all of us take a rest, we won't have anything. Community, the Muslim community. We are investing in the Muslim community first and what we should be about right now. We have to understand that what we have heard of this religion in the West, for the most part, has been presented incorrectly. The true report of this religion, how it re was revealed to Muhammad, the last prophet, peace be upon him what it did for the Dark Ages, what it did for the Arabs who were warring tribes in petty ignorance, steeped in corruption, persecutors of their women, enslavers of their young men, gangs warring against each other, making each other pay tolls or pay dues to cross over to each other's territory, divorcing their women by merely saying, woman, be as their back end of my mother to me, and she was put aside and nothing was said about it. How this religion came to people in that state during the dark ages and brought them to the peak of civilization where they became themselves the beacon light of intellectual liberty, of liberty for the intellect of the human being. How that happened, how they re renewed, renewed the sciences and made possible the regeneration of scientific interests and scientific progress for the whole world. This is a fact of history. Anyone have only to do, only to do, all you have to do is just go back and study the medieval age, study the influences of Islam upon the dark ages, and you will have all what I have said verified for you. Uh, in addition to that, Muslims have a clear record of what occurred in that time and how El Islam, the religion of Islam, liberated the intellect and freed the dark age man from corruption, ignorance, and self-abuse, the abuse of his woman, abuse of his children. The true report has not been known in the West, and Muslims, you must understand that. You must understand that the only way you can get the truth of your religion, without any doubt, is to go to the sources, the authorized sources. Go to your own holy book. And don't think that when you read the English translation of your holy book that you have it all. Any translation from the original text is not the equivalent of the original text. So it is best for you to find a teacher who understands Arabic, to teach you the Quran, to give you the knowledge of Quran, and, and while, you're, while you're doing that, you should also be busy yourself, no matter what your age is, no matter what your situation is, you may not even be literate in English. Don't fear to try to study the language of the Quran. When the prophet came, most of the people were illiterate. What he did was he made a, a program, a public program, for educating all the people because most of them couldn't read. He taught them to read the Quran. He helped each one responsible who learned how to read one verse of the Quran. He helped that Muslim responsible to teach another person that verse. We should have that same kind of enthusiasm. We should have that same kind of hunger 
for knowledge of Quran among us because we are in that situation. Though we, many of us, maybe a majority of us are literate in English, but we are illiterate when it comes to knowing Arabic. So in order for us to get the great benefit of our holy book that has been revealed for the benefit of all people, but especially for Muslims who believe in it, we must study the language of Arabic. Study the language of Arabic. Study Arabic language. And don't think you ever too old for Muhammad the peace and blessing be upon him. He said to gain knowledge, to study, to learn, to become educated is an obligation on every male, on every male and female born in the Muslim society. And he also said that the, that the obligation to, to get knowledge, to acquire knowledge, is on you from the cradle to the grave. So no matter how old you are, if you accept what Prophet has given us, you feel an obligation on you to increase your knowledge. Go back to school. Stay in school. Live in school. Die a student. That's my commitment. And it should be the commitment of every Muslim. Dear Muslims, we are addressing now the need for us to be strong in Islamic knowledge. And the only way we can be strong in Islamic knowledge is to turn to the few sources, the Quran, the Hadith, the Sunnah of the Prophet, the Sirah, the history of the Prophet, return to the wisdom of those learned companions, the wisdom of those learned imams who have survived the early days of the Muslims to pass on the knowledge to us. Study that, learn it, so that you will become strong in knowledge. There is a great man of our race who has passed and gone away, but he said to us, you will never become the equal of the white man until you strive to become equal with him in knowledge. And I believe he left us a precious wisdom in that. However, that is not enough. That is not enough. To gain knowledge will not be enough. In fact, all that is within our possibility, all that is within the human possibility, is not enough. Except we exercise that which is in our possibility that is moral. It is only the moral urge in man, it is only the moral commitment in, man, commitment in man that will preserve his life, that will preserve progress for him. We can learn all the wisdom in Quran, we can learn all the wisdom in the, in the textbooks of a college or university, but if we lose our moral interest, lose our moral life, the context of our moral life, we are finished, we cannot go forward. The proof of this, that moral deficiency affects us in the whole of our life is this very nation now, America. When this nation, though it had the ugly, ugly mark on it of racism, the ugly mark on it of Jim Crow, the ugly mark on it of the oppression of the black people, even at that time, because it had at least a strong, a strong number of Americans, from the Democrats, from the Republicans, from the Catholics, from the Protestants, a strong number of Americans promoting moral excellence for the society because it had that, this country was strong in every sense. But uh, it lost that, it lost that to a permissiveness, to a do-as-you-please kind of attitude in the society. And because of losing that moral, that moral life, now it has lost also its economic Trend. here and also in the international world. It has lost also its political strength here and in the, in the international world simply because it neglected its moral life. There's a trend now coming which I'm very happy to see and I'm sure most of you are happy to see, a trend to direct this. It's getting stronger and stronger. I heard in Chicago recently that they're going to make a law that will prevent movies coming out and people saying any old nasty thing, a vulgar thing, a perverted thing in the movie to be passed on to the young minds of our children. Dear Muslims, we have to support that. Whether it comes from Christian or Jew, we have to support it. We don't look to the faces of people. We follow God. God has set the way for us. And God says in our holy book, he looked not to your faces, he looks to your deeds. Uh, he looks not to your faces, he looks 
to your deeds, and we have to be the same. So if anyone does a good deed, whether they be Muslim, whether they be Jew, whether they be Christian or other, if they do a good deed in correcting the problem that is causing a difficulty and strain in the good life of the society, and it affects us as well as it affects other citizens, we must stand with them. We must support them. Further addressing the need for the Muslim to know what we are and what we should be all about here in America. I say to you this, that there are people among us, um, by among us, I don't mean sitting here, they may not be sitting here today, but I'm sure some of their, their associates are sitting here today. There are people among us who wear the name Muslim, who claim to be Muslim, who are presenting themselves as Muslim, but they are carrying on the same thing that made us not Muslim when we thought we were Muslim. Muslim 
Muslims and true to the Muslim people, I've seen them drooling at the mouth, anticipating the major network focusing upon them. People who stand before you and regard you as nothing but a Polaroid camera. They are hoping that you take their picture and that they come out looking beautiful. And they want you to take their picture home with you and keep their picture with you and return again to buy some tapes for five or seven dollars each. You have to be aware of the imposters who will stand up in the name of your religion but will have designs on nothing but your pocket and their egoism. You have to be aware of that. And if man is true, if a man is true to his commitment as a Muslim, if he goes abroad and makes pilgrimage to Mecca and see the reality of the religion, and he sees the Muslims over there of all colors, black, yellow, brown, red, white, with all kind of eyes, black eyes, brown eyes, uh, yellow eyes, white eyes, blue eyes, all color eyes, he goes over there and see that, he should come back and say what Malcolm said. with the greatest history for man. I mean the history of industrial progress, academic progress, cultural progress. One of the nations with the greatest history for man is a white nation and 100% almost Muslim. It has been that way. Who will tell you about that? The Turks, we hear about the Turks. The Turks are white. They are Muslims. They are not lazy Muslims. They are aggressive Muslims. They are not fearful Muslims. They are courageous Muslims. If you go there, you will live in the, their hotel. It's made of brick. They've been building brick hotels and, 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 and for 4,000 years. They didn't just start. An old civilization, an ancient civilization, with a great, great history. Muslims. There are many Muslims in Yugoslavia. Albania, Romania, Czechoslovakia. There are many Muslims in what we call the white continent of Europe and Eurasia, Eurasia. Muslims. So don't let anybody fool you and make you think that to be a Muslim is to be in something small or to be in something limited to one race. Islam is the religion that has more people of God more of the dependence of God from the different nations, from the different races than any other religion. Right. Fifty percent of the people of Africa are Muslims. Right. Right. They're all of the people of Indonesia are Muslims. Right. And they number into the hundreds of million people. Right. Right. Many of us don't know that the Indian people are Muslim. There's not only Pakistan, there are over 160 million Muslims in India. So don't think that every Indian person that comes over here, he's not a Pakistani, he's not a Muslim. No, there are millions and millions of Muslims in India. Chinese, Muslim. Many Muslims in China. Not only in uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, the Democratic China, but also in the Republic of China. And what we call Communist China. Many Muslims. You think all the Russians are Asians? No, many people there believe in God. And among those who believe in God are many Muslims in Russia who believe in God. This religion is a religion of humanity. And I'm telling you, when I look at myself and my identity problem that I have, I say, hell, who am I? I'm not an Algerian, I'm not a Moroccan, I'm not a Ghanaian, I'm not a Nigerian. Who am I? Well, he's Negro. So I, I, I agree with Muhammad. Where is that on the map? <laughs> so well, you're black. I agree with Muhammad. Where is the culture behind that? Where is the history behind that?
problem. I said, well, who am I? In my immediate family, and I'm my family. My wife, she's of my complexion, maybe a little lighter. We have a daughter much lighter than both of us. She takes her complexion from somebody else, the grandmother maybe. She's very light, looks almost like a white woman. And they, my children, the other children used to tease her. They are hey, whitey. <laughs> and make her feel so bad. She feels so bad and hurt. You see? You see how we treat the white people in our family? <laughs> America, they brought us here. All right. 
the striving poor of the African American people, the indigenous African Americans. God has favored the soul and the spirit of the striving poor of the indigenous African American man. He has favored him. All he has to realize is that he is not a loser. He is a winner. We are survivors. Oh, 
paper towel. I got wet print. <laughs> when I'm standing at night, I ain't no paper towel. I got white print. I got black print. I got white print. I got some brown print. I got yellow print. I got red print. And anything happened to me, buddy, they gonna spend the rest of their days catching up with you.
Is that that is coming from the media? You don't buy the journal? You don't even see the journal? Many of you don't even know how the journal looks. We got a Muslim journal. It comes out every week. It's got a great message in there. A message about Islam. It's got the preaching of Islam in that, in that paper. It's got also information on the third world in that paper. On our brothers and sisters in Africa and Asia. And, and, and it's parts of the third world and also uh, uh, in Europe and in, and, in communist, and in the communist circle. We've got information in there. How the Muslims are doing that. How the blacks are doing it. That information you need. But many of you don't even get the journal. You don't get the journal because you hear, well, the journal is not serving Imam's interest anymore. Look, I don't care if they, they serve my interest when they're addressing the concerns of the people. When they're addressing the issues. The current issue, they're serving me because that's what I want. I don't care if they don't put me on every page. I don't make me prominent in the paper. That doesn't bother me. Make truth prominent in the paper. Make truth prominent in the paper, and your imam is happy. And all of you should support the paper as long as it is good. As long as it's good, as long as it's a source of information, good information, as long as it's bringing news to the Muslim world to you, whether it's bringing news of your local message or not. If it is bringing news to you of the Islamic world, you should buy that paper. And if you don't have a local paper, then work hard to get yourself a local paper. That's what we intend to do. Yes, in Chicago, I'm working on it right now. We intend to get us a local paper. Because that paper is addressing world needs, world, world situations, world concerns, and we need a local paper. We're going to continue to support that paper, but we also need a local paper. You should be working on the same thing. All right. Stay in touch with stay in touch with the community that you identify with. Stay in touch with the religion and the people that you identify with. Because if you don't, as the wise people say, if you try to make a fire to warm the house, and the burning coal becomes separated from the other coal then it dies quick. But if it stays with the other coals, then it contributes to the heat of the house, and it survives and lives longer. Uh, Same thing for us. We, are, we represent life and warmth, but our life and our warmth is better protected if we come together with each other. That's a need in the human nature to socialize, to communicate with each other, to be a part of the larger concern, to be a part of the larger movement, of a larger activity, to be a part of a larger hope, the greater hope. That's the need, strong need in the soul of every human being. So don't deny yourself that. When you hear the call to a mass meeting, do your best to be present. Now, dear beloved people, let me uh, say this. We must be loyal, loyal to what we to what we profess, to what we claim. Be loyal. We say we are Muslims. If we are Muslims, then we can't say, oh, yeah, I'm a Muslim, but I don't care about Palestinian Muslims. I have nothing to do with those Palestinians. How can you have nothing to do with the Palestinians when they are your brothers and sisters in the faith? to do with that. We don't want to see the Christians as a Muslim representing you as your leader. I speak for myself and for you who are with me. We don't want to ever see the Christians become indifferent to other Christians that are suffering in other parts of the world. And we don't want to ever become indifferent ourselves as Muslims to Muslim suffering in any other part of the world. I don't care if it's Palestine. I don't care if it's Afghanistan. We have contributed money to the Afghanistan fighters. In the name of our community, I have sent checks to help them fight the war to get the uh, communist occupation out of their country. <laughs> hey, hey, you are not big enough to do that, Imam. We're too poor to do that. Hey, man, what is a thousand dollars out of our chair? The gesture, the meaning, the symbol, 
is worth a million times a million dollars. Here, here is a small people in America who are poor themselves, who have many needs and are not established as a people or as a community. But we stand by our commitment. We are Muslims. And if a Muslim is suffering anywhere, we give a little something to send a message that our heart is with the Muslim. to them over there, if they succeed, will be our contribution to the continuation of Islamic life. Huh? Yes! Look, I come from a man's lawyer who had the courage to talk so big that he frightened people who had complete control over the circumstances of his life. I wouldn't mention this man by name today. But anyway, that man has inspired me to be courageous. Courageous in my thinking. Courageous in my aspirations. Courageous in my vision. Yes, I have a courageous vision. You know what I envision for the Muslim community in America? I envision us one day having a man to rise up the presidency of the United States yeah. and bring the image of America to be beautiful in the eyes of all the world. Yeah. Without changing the basic character of the Constitution of these United States, without strapping the vital, the vital document, without strapping the vital document, I believe it's possible for a Muslim to one day ascend to the presidency of the United States. Oh yes. And not with the not with the support of a rainbow coalition, but with the support of businessmen, military men. as the 
descendants of slaves. If you follow the best of what God has blessed you with in these circumstances in America, just as he blessed the prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, in his terrible circumstances. If you follow what he has blessed you with, let me tell you something. You can establish yourselves here in this country. I don't have the time to go into all the details of how it's to be done, but we are writing now a book, a plan, a strategy for establishing us economically and politically in this country. Us as Muslims, we're going to establish an economic strength, an economic base for Islamic community in this country. We're going to establish our presence and our influence in the politics and upon the direction of government and government life in this country. We're going to do that as Muslims, we're going to do that as Americans. And we're going to, in spite of our poverty, in spite of our weakness as a people, we're going to stand by the call to uphold the greatness of this country. Whatever it's me, we're bringing our small dollars, we're bringing our small muscles, we're bringing our small arms to defend the greatness of this country that we cherish. And the greatness that we cherish is the love for freedom, not an immoral freedom, a moral freedom. We hate the immoral freedom that has come upon this country. We want the moral freedom, and we love it. We believe that's the true intent, that's the true destiny in this life, in the life of the American people. We love it, we defend it, we are ready to die for it. Dear beloved Muslims, we are going to have to stop appealing to an audience from racial concerns. That's too small and too narrow. We're going to have to stop addressing race and start addressing man. We're going to have to stop designing our materials to appeal to just blacks or the African American indigenous man here. We're going to have to design our educating materials, our books and everything, and our dialogue, our propagation materials to appeal to the universal man in America. This religion wasn't revealed to be tied up in any handkerchief wearing tribe. It was revealed for all people. For all people. And that's the spirit we have to come into. And don't you hesitate to carry the message of Islam to a Puerto Rican, to an Hispanic, to an American Indian, to a Chinese, to a Polish man. I don't care what his race is. Don't you hesitate to carry it to him. Because in this spiritual situation that we are in now in America, lost values, misplaced values, confused concerns, everybody is a good candidate for El Islam. That's what we have to believe. You understand? That's what we have to believe. Believe it in your heart and you will see. You will go up as a strong people. Don't fear mixture. Don't fear mixture. We fear mixture. Say, oh, I got a good thing now. I got a good thing now. I got a strong thing now. For the first time, I'm, I'm in command of something now. Don't fear mixture. If you are qualified, if God wants you, you can meet the competition. If he has favored you, then you will be successful. And if he haven't chosen us to lead this, then I'm ready right now to step back and let any man lead it, no matter what color skin is. I don't have to be in the forefront. I don't have to be on the top of things as long as it's going forward in the direction that it should go in. You may
relief in knowing what God says in his holy book. He says, La Teziru Weziratun Wizra Ukra. No burden, no burden person that is bearing burden is made to bear the burden of another. And that's what we have to accept. God says that. Believe me, I used to look at people in my immediate circumstances. And it used to tear my heart to pieces almost. I could feel my heart burning and bleeding, looking at their miserable state. And I wonder how come this person has to suffer like that? And it finally rested on me, the wisdom that God has revealed, that he does not burden any soul with more than it can bear, and he does not put on any soul anything but the consequence of his own deeds, and that no burdened soul is made to bear the burden of another. If we are going to be productive, if we are going to be strong and successful, if we are going to meet all the odds and keep going, if we are going to be determined, we have to get this unnecessary sentimental burden off our back. The black people are the most burdened people with sentimental Because we are steep, we are submerged in sentiments. We make spontaneous decisions. We don't say, hey, wait until I sleep on this one. You know, I tell people, even when we preach the religion, I see somebody say, they may be telling a person, go up and, and make your declaration of faith. Let them know you want to be a Muslim. I say, hey, wait a minute. I say, look, this person with you cannot make the declaration of faith for you. You wait till you're ready to come up here, and you come up here and make the declaration of faith. I say, and know this also, that our religion is not a spontaneous religion, and we don't make no spontaneous declaration of faith. We think over what we are committing ourselves to. We say, Esha Hadu which means I witness. You can't witness something when you got the Holy Ghost. Somebody has to tell you what, what was happening after you come out of the spell. So I tell them, wait until the spell go on. And you can think clearly. Then you say, as you had you, I witness with my intellect, with my common senses, with my own intelligence. I am a witness that God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. I say, don't be so quick to tell us that in the presence of all these people. Because some of these people want to get to you right away and spoil your communion. Be better if you go in privacy and tell that to two or three Muslims that you have confidence in. Tell them, say, I shall know in Allah, I shall know in Muhammad Rasulullah, and know that you're a Muslim and come back among these people and they don't know what you are.
when you look at the kind of bad conditions we have in our past and the kind of opposition we meet right now, not from whites, but from our own feet, when we try to lift ourselves up out of our misery. It's understandable that we have become so heavily sensitized emotionally that we are just a lump of sentiments. Are people tender? Are people easy to hurt? Are people self-conscious? Are people easy to offend? But that's our biggest weakness right now. Look, be sentimental at home in the hour of romance with your wife. And as soon as the romance is over and you have to go to work, be practical. Yeah. Yeah. And as a race, if we want to be sentimental, let us do it doing the dua. Not doing the chutzpah, doing the dua. Let us cry doing the dua.
take her dust mop and she put a little that, that blue, a red oil on it. You know that oil they used to dust with? And she would go over those floors, be through in about 15 minutes. She go in the kitchen, about 10 minutes, everything cooked, everything ready for, uh, ready for cooking. She go in there and cook her meal. She go and wash the clothes with no electric machine. She take those clothes and wash them. She finish, noon day, she read, or, or wait for her husband to come home at noon time. But now, the average wife, she can't do that. Uh -uh. The soap opera is just eight hours. She's trying to take care of the soap opera, give attention to the soap opera, and everything else at the same time. And then she go down the air. She said, well, I think I ought to wash today. <laughs> and that little man, her son, little man, he got 28 pairs of socks. And all of them dirty. And, and, and she got to find them. She got to find them. Because he hasn't been taught to keep things in their proper places. If he's been taught, the, 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 the trends in the society have just killed the lesson. Okay? So she, she tried to find his 28 pair of socks. And now she got to find his underclothes. So after a while, she got all of his, she found all his clothes, got all his clothes together now. Half the day gone. Now she goes down there and she puts his clothes in the wash. Now she got to go upstairs and make the front room look like the front room because the little man made the front room look like the toilet. <laughs> She ain't got enough time to go to the bedroom and make the bedroom look like a bedroom. So she got to carry that burden on all day long. I couldn't do nothing to my bedroom today. You see? So more than woman, she's just so burdened that the man has to help her much more than man has helped his wife in the history of man on this earth. Oh, oh, oh. Foolish idea that oh my father didn't do this. My father, he was a good husband, good father, and good husband, and he didn't do these things. My mother took care of those things. Man, look, take my word for it. Your mother was nothing like burden as much as this modern woman is burdened in 1985. She had enough time to worry about your future. These women now, nowadays, they ain't got time to worry about no future. They just hoping you make it for the next hour. <laughs> and they, they ain't still alive, thank God. <laughs> and we are blessed. We are really blessed if we got children who are not in jail, who are not the slaves of abusive chemicals who are not crazy in their minds and doing all kind of perverted things. We are blessed in this day and time if we got children who are not into those things. So don't be so hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself with a rod that is out of time, that's in the wrong age. No. Sometimes we can be too hard on ourselves. We can demand too much of ourselves in the given circumstances. You have to understand the burden of the present circumstances in your life, in your children's lives, in the lives of society. And don't be so hard on yourself. Don't condemn yourself. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to make it. Oh, God, they're going to let me into heaven. Look, the prophet, peace and the blessings be upon him. He said there will come a time that will be so terrible that one good act will be worth many, many. Yes, something like praying one prayer will count for so many prayers in that terrible time. And I believe that we have come to a period of decadence, small decadence, and insane behavior in the public life of the American people in the West that to me answers that time and that prophecy. 
Yes, it does. So let's not be so hard on ourselves. Some of us, when we become holy, we want to become gods, security men, to watch the others to see that they are just as holy. Say, hey, did you make your thickness? Hey, did you make your five prayers today? Hey, look, when you go to heaven or hell, buddy, it ain't going to be because somebody else didn't make their prayers. It's going to be because you didn't make yours. You make your prayers. You make your prayers. And that's not the only question that's going to be asked. Did you make your prayer? First question that may be asked is how did you treat the revelation of God? How did you treat Muhammad the prophet? How did you treat your obligation to uphold la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah? How did you identify as a Muslim or with the world in your behavior? Because Prophet Muhammad said, the religion is behavior, not how you feel. The religion is your behavior. And you can feel good about this religion, but if it doesn't reflect in your behavior, then you are missing this religion. That's what the prophet said, that the religion is behavior. It's your conduct. And he also said, peace be upon him, any people who follow, any of us, who follow the way of the people of the world. They are not of us. So understand that. You can call yourself Muslim, but if you're drinking, using dope, pimping, taking advantage of people, trying to go and prosper on the backs of other people or on the weaknesses of other people, you're following the wicked world. You're following the corrupt world. Then that identifies you. Whatever you give yourself as behavior, that identifies you. Understand this also. Prophet Muhammad said that anyone in who the Allah says probably in the Quran, correction, that people people behave according to their disposition. They behave according to their disposition. Now, if your behavior is un-Islamic, you should question your attitudes. Question your attitudes. Question your own disposition. What is your position? That's how some of you can support a tyrant and say you with me. If you with me, you can't support no tyrant. You can support a racist and yet say you with me. Say, oh no, that's wrong to talk about him. He's our brother too. Well, I don't want no people in my bed talking about they my family. When I look at them, they got horns coming out of their heads and fangs on them. No, they ain't in my family. No, indeed. So look at your own disposition. Question your own feelings. Don't you know we have to question our own feelings? How you feel about somebody? Is it right or wrong? We can be wrong in the way we feel. Oh, I, my heart, my heart loves him. But is it right? I saw a woman that lived in a neighborhood where there was an old toothless woman. She had a man. I guess that's why she was toothless. He was no good, abusive. He was a scoundrel. He was a no good, corrupt scoundrel. She loved him. She loved it. And she said, I can't help it. I just love it with my heart. But was it right? Was it right of her to love somebody like that? No, it was wrong. That's why your salvation, the salvation for your sentiment is in first loving God. Love Allah first and love his messenger. And then dictate the portion of love you should give to others in the light of that love. Your human example. And then question 
take your own behavior in the light of that and have the strength to put away your own sentiments from a person or an object or a thing or a situation that doesn't deserve it. That takes strength. That takes strength. Be sentimental, but also be sentimentally strong. Be sentimentally strong. Now, dear Muslims, what should we have as top priority as a Muslim community? Number one, Islamic education. Why? Because we are a new converted community. A new converted community. So we need to strengthen ourselves with Islamic education. Let us take pride in having our own Islamic schools. If you can't manage it any but three grades, have three grades. School for three grades. But don't put up any shams. Are you listening? How come all the fires are down there? Don't put up any shams. If you're not ready to have a school that does the intellect and the minds of your children justice in the time and in the situation that you're in in this America, then don't shortchange them. Rob them of an education in the name of giving them Islamic education. No, give them Islamic education on Saturday for an hour or for two hours until you get the resources and the equipment to at least give them a comparable education. All right? That's the answer. But don't be satisfied until you have universal level. Yes, we intend to go to universal level. We hope that one day we got high school in Chicago, we got good, strong high school. We got a man with a PhD in science, and in higher math, he's the principal of our school in Chicago. He has his doctorate degree. Look, our school is one of the best private schools in Chicago. Oh, yes. And we teach Arabic there. We intend to add, to add Spanish and also French as foreign languages. That's going to raise the value, the prestige of that school in Chicago. It's already raised because we have one foreign language there, Arabic. All right. Uh, now, we have to put the importance first on education. Support your schools. If you don't have a school, encourage the, the, the academic-minded and educated people in, in, the, in the message and in the community to work on that problem. Work on bringing into existence a school. Start with uh, early grades and go on up as you, ma as you can manage. Now, <clears throat> that's not all. Not just a school. School is what's going to make business stronger in the community. The more important we put on education, the more we're going to upgrade business interests in the community. Our people who have no appreciation for knowledge are very weak in business. You may not be educated, you may not have a high school diploma. Many men are successful in business, they didn't even finish grade school. But they have a great appreciation for knowledge. They read, they study, they listen to the why, and they have accumulated a lot of knowledge, and they, and they use that as their light in their business. All right, so we have to understand that the more we promote the, 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 the rising of the level of knowledge, in our community, the better the future is going to be for our individual and collective business efforts. So we go now from business to political concern. You cannot isolate yourself as Muslims from the general concerns of your local community whether it's your district or your city, you have to be in tune or at least aware and, 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 and not indifferent to what is going on in your local political community. 
and look for opportunity to help the best people who are serving that community. Look for opportunity to rise up into the system yourself. Maybe you are not qualified, but you as a concerned political-minded Muslim should be looking to other members in your immediate environment to see what member in our community has political promise. And then give them a good word, give them encouragement. Who knows, maybe he will enter politics and become a great factor for improving the life of the people. Not only the Muslim, but the local people. So let us be political minded. Don't think we are America not to be involved politically. Get away from that old idea that the nation of Islam must have its state separate government. Our separate government doesn't require that we be in the city government or the city seat or the state seat or the, or, or the national seat. It doesn't require that. And let, there's a great mistake on the part of our race in thinking that we need someone in the Senate, someone in the presidency, someone in the mayor's seat, that we will never be situated nice until we have those top political positions. No. Asians have come into this country and within a few years, they have situated themselves very nicely and they are not aspiring to those great political positions. No, but be politically alert. Influence what's going on. Be a factor in deciding who gets there. And the only way you can be a strong factor for deciding who gets there, you have to get some money, get some business, get some property, own productive wealth. Yes, own productive wealth. Where the city values you. Where the, where the responsibility for collecting tax taxes is shared, I pardon me, the tax burden for those who collect taxes comes also from you. That's the situation we must have. And it's only going to come if we see the whole community picture and then work for the whole community good, work for the common good of the community, work for the purpose and the future of a civilized, intelligent, thriving, productive community. That's the key. Take your mind off of black as a color. Take your mind off of getting into the White House and having a first black as president. Look at here, first black and go in there as president and we as a people will remain in the same situation we are in right now until we understand that we have to become a people with some base, some base, some roots, some establishment in the city that is comparable with what other people, other ethnic groups have. Other ethnic groups, they come into this country and they don't busy themselves in just praying to their Buddha or praying to their what God or whatever is there. They busy themselves also in progressing their community economic. And they are willing to do it the hard way. They are willing to struggle hard, pay the price, to get the blessing. Most of us, we want it too quick. Say, oh, brother, ma'am, I like your ideas, but I want something right now. How can I get a million dollars right now? I can give it to you, and you'll be without it this evening. <laughs> Maybe I can go and sell a piece of property of ours and get you a million dollars cash and put it in your hands. But with that kind of mind, it'll be out of your hands within a few days. Maybe one day, you might meet a con man who will convince you to invest that million and you might lose it in one hour. They say a fool and his money soon parts. Is that why we so poor as a race? I don't know. I know something's wrong. The President of these United States, when he came into office, stopped receiving pressure from the black community. What did he tell some of our leaders who went to the White House? He told them, get your dollar to at least make two circuits in your community. That's the answer. <laughs> and your dollar going out of your pocket and going away and don't even come back to you one time. 
Now, that was harsh. Some of you may say that was cold, the regular cold. But maybe it was. But it sure is beneficial if you will heed it. If you will heed it. If you will follow that advice and find a way to control your own resources to the best of your ability and not be satisfied with your present ability but work hard as hell to improve your ability at controlling your own resources. That's the answer. Let us manage our own resources better. Let us start right with our own pocket change and stop wasting it foolishly. Start with the check that we get once a week or every two weeks or every month and stop wasting it foolishly. Value the future of your children and put some of that money up. Don't be ashamed to not have a car. If you can't afford a car, don't have a car. Take the city transportation or walk. Get you a bicycle. Don't be afraid. Join the third world people in that situation and show them that you can be, be a leader in the United States for them in the third world because they don't have this kind of sense. They don't have this kind of sense. The communists come in and they put restrictions on their people. They manage everything and they make, they make unestablished people shape up and start doing something productive. But the third world on its own, and I'm speaking mainly of Africa and the Caribbean now, they haven't got that discipline. They don't have the spirit to bring their life into some kind of control and work hard and help with a plan five-year plan, a ten-year plan that's designed to take them out of these terrible straits into a more livable situation. They can't do like the, like the Cubans. They can't do like the Arabs that come to America from overseas, come here, and they live in bad, unbearable conditions. For us, at least for blacks, we look at them and say, hey, that's a shame the way they live. And after a while, they gone. And you're looking at them and saying, hey, that's a shame they got this business in our community and a lot is blowing up us. You ain't fit for them to employ. Their work ethics and their work discipline is too strong for your weakness. They can't hire you in their business. You ain't disciplined enough economically. You're not disciplined enough business-wise. You're not disciplined enough morally to strengthen their business. So they can't hire you. When they hire you, they make a great But this is the teaching that will make us shape up and be a strong people. Yeah. Get your life into some kind of control. Don't look for immediate reward. Work hard for the future. That's the Islamic life. God says do what you can today, but work hard also for the future. But Muhammad said live in the world as though you are going to live forever. But live also in the world as though you're going to die today. Work hard in hell to have an achievement on your record today. But look to the distant future for achievement down the road. Then that takes sacrifice, that takes waiting, that takes the ability to hope for a deferred reward, a reward that's not coming immediately. And that's the kind of life, and that's the kind of spirit, that's the kind of discipline we need if we're going to pull the race up out of this deficiency and this extreme dependency upon outside circumstances. How can we charge everybody with responsibility for our situation as a race when we are neglecting the major cause that is right at home, right at home in our own hands? We are doing nothing but waiting on opportunity to come from the outside. I hope for the day when I can walk out of my house and look at a building across the street and say, we put it up. Stop moving all over the town. Waiting for the white man to make another neighborhood livable. No, tear down the do-it he's doing right here. Tear down the, the, the unlivable structure and put up one even better. Stop moving. Stop being the nomads of America. That's what the black man is in Chicago. I don't know Los Angeles. But in Chicago, we are the nomads of Chicago. We come in behind the Jew or some other ethnic group and live in that deserted mess until it becomes too burdened for us financially, and then we wait for the city to come in with an urban renewal plan and open up a new neighborhood for us. That's terrible. Stop being the city's nomads. Stop being the country's nomads. Stop looking to outside circumstances for your future. Stop counting on other factors for your survival outside of your own immediate circumstance. Stop looking to other races to show you the way. Accept the leadership yourself for your immediate family.
for your neighborhood, for your community, for your people. Have the courage to envision a better life for the African-American indigenous person in this country. Yeah. Have the courage to do that. And let me tell you something in my conclusion. We are not going to do that alone. That's the message to the outside community. We need you, and you need us. We are a new thing in America. We are a new life in America. We have something to contribute to the plurality of American culture, the plurality of American system. We have something to contribute. We represent a strength within ourselves. We have a distinct identity that is the Muslim life. There is hope for the neighborhood in us, but we can't do it alone. There is hope for us in you. Let us team together. Let that select few come together. Not a select few of all Muslims, a select few of Muslims, Christian, Jew if you want to come. Come on, Jew. We can compete with you. We're not afraid of your Judaism. Don't you be afraid of our other Islam. Let us all come together and let us work together to make a more beautiful life and a more beautiful future for us in America. A human life, a human condition, a human future. Democracy, progress, strength. Acceptance in the eyes of man all over this world. Where the image of America will be loved and not hated. Where people will not have mixed emotions when they look at our man sitting in the United Nations or addressing the United Nations. They won't, don't know how to respond to him. If they say, here is a man that hired the CIA and sent him in and toppled our leader that we knew was good for us. You know, and they got mixed emotions. Well, let me tell you something. The character of the CIA is not only the white man's responsibility, the character of the CIA is also the black man's responsibility. You become more involved and more responsible as a citizen of the total country. And that's the last step in the future for the progress of the people. Yeah. Then we will progress. Start at home with your immediate circumstance, move out in your community, yeah. in your immediate community, and embrace the whole country and share in the whole concern. And become actively involved, do your little bit, even though it's no more than being present, saying, I'm here. Yeah. Say, hey, say, hey, you call my name? Here! Yeah. 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 I used to join the fruit and fruit of Islam, you know, and they would call the road. And I was waiting for them to say, Wallace Muhammad, I said, here! 